So Katy Perry was recently interviewed by Zane Lowe for Apple Music, where she described leaving her Christian beliefs and finding a new set of beliefs. Now, to give a little background, Katy Perry's relationship with religion has always been, well, let's just say that they have some history. So she was raised in a Pentecostal family, which she describes as being extremely legalistic. And in several interviews, she actually describes all of the rules that they had and even how they weren't even allowed to say deviled eggs. She said that she wasn't allowed to listen to anything besides Christian music. And the only way that she heard about Madonna and Marilyn Manson was because her family was actually picketing their concerts and she would go with them. And she says that when she was actually handing out tracks at a Marilyn Manson concert, she caught a glimpse of the show. And she said that she saw it to be interesting and weird, but also that she understood it. She said she got it. A lot of people don't know this, but she actually started her music career as a gospel singer at the age of 16. And that's when she started touring the country as a Christian music artist. When she was 17, that's when she started noticing that she felt herself drifting away from God. And she eventually got to a point where she decided to start doing secular music. In 2008 is when she eventually broke into fame with her hit song, I Kissed the Girl, which was, let's just say a pretty significant departure from her Christian music beginnings. That song is actually what made her famous and at the same time it also upset her religious family and so no one really knew what for certain her religious views have been after that until now in a recent interview she touched on the current state of her parents religious beliefs as well as her own as they stand today so we're going to go ahead and play the clip where she talks about it and i'll give my thoughts on it after it's done so let's go ahead and get right into it if this is your first time here go ahead and hit that sub button and meme team you guys ready then let's go I guess I had to make a choice a while back. I had to agree to disagree with my parents or not have parents. When was that? In my 20s, when I stopped trying to change their core belief system. But my parents are unique. You know, my upbringing wasn't, I mean, for everyone else, it gets, I guess it felt like rebellion, but really it was just me creating an alternate reality because I didn't care for the reality that I grew up in that was very sheltered and, you know, one state of mind. And they did the best they could. And they've come a long way from where they were. They're, you know, a lot more evolved, a lot more loving, a lot more accepting. Yes, they still have their core beliefs. But there has been some more compassion installed on both sides. And like I said, I, I guess I just had had to choose to um, either have parents or just agree to disagree on some some really annoying belief systems. I mean, but we've gotten into the ring like we went to family therapy together. We did it as a unit and it was intense, you know, for a few of them. So I guess I would say that, like, I respect that they have their own belief systems, but it does not make me feel like I have to believe that, you know, and I guess my relationship with God is not based on a denomination or a specific rule set coming from a the Bible or a belief system. It's really widespread. And, you know, a lot of like fundamental Christians are, hate that idea. They hate the idea of like a person that's spiritual or blah, blah, blah. But it is what they want you to be on their team. It's really widespread. I would call myself, I would define myself as a seeker. I'm a complete seeker of anything faith-based, of God, of a lot of different religions. I am a seeker towards better human evolution. All right. So she rightly claims that she doesn't have to believe whatever her parents believe. And that's true. She doesn't. But I think that the better question is, should she believe what they believe? And the answer to that question, I think, depends on if what her parents believe is true or not. If what her parents believe is true, then yes, she should believe whatever her parents believe. And if what her parents believe isn't true, then of course she shouldn't believe it. But if you paid attention to what she said she was seeking, you'll notice that she didn't mention that she was searching to figure out what was true and what wasn't true or anything like that. Instead, she said that she was seeking something that would actually help humanity evolve. So if this is the case, then her being spiritual is fine in some ways, I guess, because it's not ultimately God that she's actually searching for. So it's not ultimately God that she's probably going to find. The problem is because she rejects any authority that could actually contradict her view of God, there's no way for her to know if her relationship is actually with God as she believes 
or if it's really with herself and some subjective feelings that she has deep down inside. I guarantee you that her subjective feelings about what God is and what God is like is in direct conflict with what Mormons feel or with what Jehovah Witnesses feel or Jim Jones or literally anyone else on the planet for that matter. If she doesn't have a way to know if she's right or wrong about God, then she can't know if it's really God that she's having a relationship with or if it's actually really herself that she has a relationship with or given that Christianity is true, the devil all of which are possible. This is why we need to base our search on what is true rather than on what works or helps us evolve. What's ironic here is that in reality, there's actually countless studies that show how Christianity helps people evolve and become happier and physically healthy people as well. But that isn't why I believe in it. I believe in Christianity because I believe that it's objectively true and that it actually corresponds with the way that reality really is. For example, so if you listen to the full interview, you'll notice how Katie rightly points out how bad people are to one another and how people ought to be better towards each other. Um, she even talks about how her parents raised her and she complains about how awful people are to each other when it comes to politics and how women in entertainment should be better to each other and all sorts of other things. And she's right about a lot of it. I think we can all agree because the thing is humans actually have a near universal agreement that we shouldn't lie or steal or cheat or exploit or murder and so on. But even though we all know that these things are wrong and destructive, and most people agree on this, we still continue to do them, hurting ourselves and hurting other people. But at the same time, we also know that humans can't stop doing these things either. And that's where the whole problem is. The Bible calls this problem sin. But sin isn't the only thing about Christianity that corresponds with the world and the way that things really are in reality. If you've been following this channel for a while, then you already know that I believe that we have plenty of evidence that Christianity is true, going from everything from cosmology to history to archaeology to biology and countless other areas. Sin is a real problem in the world, but the problem actually gets worse when we realize that God is perfectly just. So if you think about a judge who's perfect in justice, you know that he'll make sure that every single wrongdoing will be punished. And if he let a single wrongdoing go unpunished, then he wouldn't be perfectly just. Now, God is not only perfectly just, but at the same time, he's also perfectly merciful. So this means that he cares for us and he wants us to be rightly related to him. He has mercy on us. So how does a perfectly just and a perfectly merciful God come together in order to help save us from ourselves? Well, that's the gospel message. He actually put on human flesh and came into our world and took the punishment for us. So in other words, he chose to pay the penalty for the things that we freely chose to do wrong and he put himself in our place and then he offers that to us as a free gift. All we have to do is just accept his offer. So if the problem that Christianity solves is sin and saving us from ourselves, then it becomes obvious that being spiritual doesn't solve that problem. So now it probably becomes obvious why Christians would have a problem with somebody rejecting the free gift of salvation while holding on to something that's just spiritual that actually can't save you. So when she says that her view is more widespread, I know that that sounds virtuous and open-minded, but ultimately she's still rejecting the thing that solves the spiritual problem in the first place. So really her view just isn't widespread enough. What Katie described isn't unique. I'm sure that most people watching this video probably knows someone who talks about God in this exact same way. I think everybody probably has someone in their family at least that talks this way. That view is actually becoming the most dominant view in America now, and that's the view of thinking that we discover God based off of our internal desires and feelings. But that's not really discovering God, that's actually creating them. The truth is, we can't save ourselves. So when we create God in our own image, we aren't doing ourselves any favors. What we really need is the true God to save us from ourselves. That's what we really need. Now, I understand the temptation to create God in our own image because I think that everyone shares that to some degree. But this type of thinking leads to a bunch of absurd and actually hilarious conclusions like the ones that I show here in this skit that I did with my wife a while back. So go ahead and click on this video and I'll see you over there. But the next time that you hear someone rejecting Christianity in the name of being spiritual, what are you gonna say? What do you mean? Here's why I say that. 